What's up YouTube, it's Warrett back at it again with another video. These past couple weeks, the Bitcoin and crypto markets have been tanking and people have been wondering what is actually the best way to buy the crypto dip when this kind of stuff happens. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a manual strategy for smash buying dips. And then I'm gonna take you guys through a tutorial of an automated buying strategy that you can start using today for free. That's basically just going to buy dips for you when they happen. Go down below and smash buy the like button and let's level up your brain. So first let's go over how to manually smash buy a dip. If you have any iOS device, my favorite way to smash buy a dip is using a Siri shortcut with the Gemini API. This strategy is great because you're able to take advantage of all of the features of the Gemini API, which is not only the cheapest way to buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency that's listed on Gemini because of their 0.1% buy fees and their 10 free transfers per coin per month, but it's also good because with the prompts that are created easily by the Siri shortcuts, you can actually set a limit order to smash buy at whatever price you want. And because it's a series shortcut, it's pretty easy to automate this if you did want to automate it. The strategy is also great because you have your iPhone with you everywhere. And so you can smash by sort of wherever you are. The downsides to the strategy is that you do need the Pi2 app, which allows you to run Python scripts on your iOS device. And the full version of the Pi2 app does cost $10. But if you're currently using some other strategy to dollar cost average Bitcoin, other than the Gemini API, you'll actually make back those $10 just from trading fees by using the Gemini API over time. Other downside is it's obviously only for Apple devices. So if you guys do want to implement that strategy, I'll leave a video up in the cards where you can go check out how to implement that manual smash buy strategy on iOS devices. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at what are your options when you have an Android device. If you have an Android device, there is definitely a way to run Python scripts on Android devices. And so you could go over to that video and just copy the Python script that we wrote over for that video and port it to whatever the app is that allows you to do this over on Android. Android, but I'm not actually sure what those services are and I haven't set one up because I actually don't have an Android device. If a lot of you guys would be interested in me making a video about how to set up this exact same thing on an Android device, go ahead and leave a comment down below and maybe also suggest like a cheap Android phone or tablet or something that I could buy to try this out on. I'll also leave a link down in the description. It's an article basically that's gonna show you what are the best apps for Python development on Android. And so again, if you do wanna set this up for yourself, you should just be able to go download one of those apps, copy the code from that video that I linked up in the cards, and then get this running on your own Android device, obviously without Siri shortcuts, but maybe with some Android equivalent. In the meantime, the best way that I know of to smash by Bitcoin on an Android device is using the Strike app. The Strike app gives you very cheap access to Bitcoin, cheaper than any other mobile app that I've used. When I have used Strike to buy Bitcoin, the fee that I've gotten has been around 0.2%, which is actually super competitive with the Gemini API and actually beats out a lot of other big exchanges like Coinbase Pro. The downside to this method is obviously right now you can't set limit orders on Strike. Strike is also Bitcoin only. So if you were trying to dollar cost average some other cryptocurrency, it's not gonna be available because Strike doesn't support any of those other tokens. And then if you guys do want some Strike tutorials, I'll leave a playlist up in the cards that you guys can check out to learn more about Strike if you haven't heard of it before. Next, let's go ahead and jump into the real meat of this video where I'm gonna show you guys how to automatically buy the dip using the Gemini API. Okay, so for the sake of everyone's time here, I'm not gonna rehash how to set up the Gemini API from scratch. If you guys haven't set up the Gemini API for yourselves, I'm gonna leave the link to the original tutorial up in the cards. The Gemini API is great because it's not only the cheapest way to buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency that's offered on Gemini, but the Gemini API is also a platform that we can build on top of to create automated trading strategies like this one that we're going through today of automatically buying dips. The strategy that we're going to use today to buy dips is gonna be very simple and it's actually gonna be based on the code that we already wrote back in that original video. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create a ladder of limit orders that is X percent lower than the current spot price. So what does that mean? That just basically means that instead of buying at the current price, which maybe the current price of Bitcoin is something around 40,000, maybe instead of setting a limit order at 40,000 that fills right away, we're going to be setting a limit order for 5% less than 40,000 that, you know, maybe it won't fill for a week or maybe it won't fill for two weeks or something like that. I've been doing this strategy for a couple weeks now. And as the price started to crash over these last couple weeks, limit orders that I placed back in December started to fill in early January here, a couple weeks after I actually posted them. So as the Bitcoin price was falling, my limit orders were filling and I was getting better price execution than I would have gotten if I had just spot bought Bitcoin back in December. Of course, the risk with this strategy is that maybe if Bitcoin just continues to go up into the right or whatever cryptocurrency you're trading and it never actually comes down and fills those limit orders, then you're never going to actually have converted your cash into whatever that 
cryptocurrency was. Because of this, I view sort of these limit orders as a way to actually like store cash that I'm okay, maybe if it never converts, but it's sort of like an outside bet that like, hey, if Bitcoin ever falls to this, I'm totally fine converting this cash into Bitcoin because that's actually a really good price, you know, in today's view, basically. And then maybe if that limit order never fills, I can just take that cash out, you know, a year from now or two years from now or something and use it for, you know, whatever I want to use it for at that point. So now let's jump into AWS here and see how we can actually automate this creation of limit orders so that we can automatically buy dips. So all we're going to do is we're going to go into Lambda just like we do with any other function here on the Gemini API. We're going to create a new function. We're going to set it up for Python 3.8 x86.64 and we're going to give it a name. So this one I'm going to call automatic Bitcoin buying demo create function. Now once we're in the function we're going to remember to go to the bottom and add our Gemini layer so that everything will work. Custom layers and Gemini layer and add that to the function. And that's the first thing that I like to do whenever I make a new function just because otherwise I'll forget to do it and nothing will work. So now that we're back I'm going to delete all the code that they had in here by default and I'm going to go over to the Notion web page that's going to be linked down in the description where you can find all the code that I've written for the Gemini API. And so now if we go down to the bottom here we're going to find automatically buy dips with low limit orders. So we're going to copy all of this code and just paste it here into the console. We're going to give it our public key and our private key from the Gemini API. If you guys have set up the Gemini API before, you can use the exact same keys. I just created some new keys just for demo purposes. You shouldn't ever share your keys with anyone or they'll be able to trade on your behalf. So now that I've got my keys in there, I'm going to hit deploy because remember every time you make a change, you are going to have to deploy those changes so that AWS has the latest code. And then if you do want to change the cryptocurrency that you're buying, maybe you don't want to buy Bitcoin, you'll just change this symbol BTC USD to whatever the symbol is that you want. And you can find the list of symbols and the tick sizes and quote currency price increments for your specific cryptocurrency, whatever trading pair that you want to trade here on the symbols and minimums page in the Gemini docs that I'll leave down in the description. Basically, the important information is symbol. So if you wanted to trade ETH BTC, you would take this ETH BTC here. For tick size for ETH BTC, you would take six. And for quote currency price increment, you would take five. Anything where quote currency price increment is you know 0 0.1, that's going to be two for quote currency price increment. You're basically measuring the number of digits that happen after the decimal place. So if you did want to change that, you could change that here. I'm not going to because I'm only really interested in buying Bitcoin. And so then we'll scroll down here. And this is where we're really going to be making changes to this script. The big change that I've made to this script over the original buy Bitcoin script is that now you can pass in a second variable here to the buy Bitcoin function. If you pass in nothing like we are in this first example here, we're just passing in the buy size. This will buy $20 of Bitcoin at about the spot price or 0.999 times the spot price. So it will give you a very quick fill, but the price execution won't be very good and it's not going to be really great for buying dips. And so if you pass it a second parameter here, like we do in the second example, we're passing 0.95. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a buy order for 0.95 times the current spot price or a 5% discount on what the current spot price is. And so as another example, you could call this buy Bitcoin function again, just copy and paste this here and make sure that it's lined up. And if we did this as 0.75, that's going to post a limit order of 0.75 times the current spot price. So it's going to be a lot lower. Bitcoin is going to have to fall 25% for this limit order to fill. And so that would be really good if it did fall that much because you would be able to accumulate more Bitcoin, but it might actually take a really long time for it to fall 25% or it might not fall 25% ever. And so that limit order would never fill. So this is sort of the gamble you're taking when you set these limit orders in this way. So we hit deploy here to send our changes up to AWS. And then I'm going to show you what this looks like when we hit test. Basically, we're creating three orders, one for the spot price of Bitcoin, one for 5% less than the spot price, and then one for 25 percent less than the spot price. And you could create as many orders as you want to make here. Maybe you wanted to make something like three orders a day or five orders a day that are all 5% less than each other. So that would look like, you know, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0 0.85, 0 0.8. However many you wanted to do, you could just copy and paste this thing and give it a different factor here. And that's how it should work. So let's hit test and just see what this is going to look like. For the first time you hit test, you're going to have to create an event name. You just call this test and then go down here and hit create. And then let's look over here on my Gemini open order here in Active Trader, you're going to see that I have three orders. And when I hit test for the first time, three new orders should show up here. So let's go ahead and hit test. We'll see that everything should have posted. And if we just wait here for a second, you'll see that the three orders posted. The first one posted for about the spot price of Bitcoin. This one is 5% less. And then this one is 
20% less. So this 31,000 limit order is only going to fill if Bitcoin drops 25%. And because these limit orders never expire, unless Gemini is doing some sort of like yearly or bi-yearly maintenance, these orders will stay on the order book theoretically forever. And so you can just leave them there and hope that one day they get filled. So I'm gonna cancel these three limit orders just by going here into status and hitting cancel. And then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna show you maybe if you wanted to set a limit order for a 40,000, one for 30,000, one for 20,000, something like that with the amount variable being changed instead of a sort of variable percentage. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So if we wanted to instead change the execution price, all we would do is come up here to factor and delete it basically and call it execution price. So now we have to give it this fourth parameter. And so we'll come down to execution price and we'll just delete this basically because now execution price, we just want to be set directly into this method. And so now when we give it this fourth parameter, we could say 40,000.00, 30,000.00, and then we'll delete this one up here because it doesn't have enough parameters. We need the fourth execution price parameter. And so let's copy this and give it 20,000. We'll hit deploy. And so now this should be posting a limit order for 40,000, 30,000, and 20,000. So let's hit test. Okay, it didn't work because I didn't put these in quotes. But if we put these in quotes here, and then we hit deploy, and then we hit test, and then we go back to Gemini, we'll see that the three orders posted. So 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. And so you could do this in both ways. You could do this as just the percentage, or you could do what I just did and place different limit orders based on the exact amount that you wanted to trade. And then of course, we could come back up to AWS, we could go into event bridge and we could automate whatever script that we just wrote there to have it run every day or every hour or every week or something like that to automatically post limit orders that are slightly lower than whatever the spot price is so that you're filling up basically your order book for if there's ever a big red candle, all of these orders that you set are gonna fill, right? If we go down 15%, every order that you set that was 5% lower is just gonna fill, 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 fill all the way down. And so the way that we would do this here on EventBridge, same as we've always done, back over to rules, create rule, call this maybe automatic dip buying weekly and give it a schedule. And we'll do this uh, once every seven days. And then we'll scroll down to the Lambda function and we'll target the automatic Bitcoin dip buying demo function that we just wrote. And then we would hit create here. And once we hit create, now that schedule is going to run every seven days. You'll see that that script will run for the first time once you enable it. Mine just ran and did the 40,000, 30,000, 20,000 when I just created that once every seven days thing. So now today is day zero, seven days from now, we'll run that same script again. And then if you ever did want to get rid of it, you could just come in here to the event bridge rules, right where we are, automatic dip buying weekly. I don't want to do this anymore because I already have one set up. So I'm just going to come into, uh, I could say disable if I wanted to re-enable it later, or I could just delete it. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, go down below and leave it a like so that YouTube will share it with other people and hopefully they can get a better idea of how they can automatically buy the dip also. I'm gonna be posting a lot more Gemini API content this year in 2022. So if you guys haven't already, definitely go implement that first Gemini API tutorial. Even if you aren't very technical, I have been able to help every single person that has reached out to me via DMs on Twitter, get through some of the common issues that they've had setting up the script and get rolling using the Gemini API, which is the cheapest way to dollar cost average any cryptocurrency that's hosted on Gemini. If you guys have any questions or if you wanna see any other indicators or trading strategies brought into the Gemini API, go ahead down below and leave a comment. I do still respond to all the comments. That's it for today. I love you all. Goodbye.